Hello, my name is Ryan and I'm the tech director here at Seven Church. I'd like to thank you for checking out our videos online. And if you'd like to learn more about us, you can look us up at www.7sd.org. If you'd like to help support one of the many ministries that we have here on campus or in our community, one easy way to give is to text the amount that you would like to give to 7sd at mogive.com. Thank you and enjoy the message. So I looked up change and Webster tells us change is to make different. Change is to make radically different. I like that word. And change is to give a different position, course, or direction. I really like that last one. Different course and direction. There's a verse that I've always kind of held on to in my life, which is, Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. That's exactly what we celebrated last week for Easter. Jesus sacrificing himself for us. See, throughout my life, I kept seeing change and never knew where change was taking me. Sometimes I didn't even realize change was happening. It was just happening. But in my early 20s, when I fully accepted God and wanted to make that change, the one thing that stuck out to me and the one thing that I kind of had to hold on to because we all do it, is we need to let go of our past. I've said it. You know, are you, even when they said you should be a pastor, I'm like, do you know my past? Like, are you serious? I learned that I needed to let go of my past. Isaiah 43, 18. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Forget it. You accept Jesus into your life, sins are washed away. It's time to move forward. Let go of the past. I have been crucified in Christ. I no longer live at that point. Christ lives in me. And we need to take that, hold on to that. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. I know the plans I have for you. See, when that contract got ripped in front of my face, I had no idea that 15, almost 20 years later that I'd be standing up here preaching today. I took it as my dream was gone. But God had a different plan. I was terrified to talk in front of people. I was a musician. You're on stage all the time. What do you mean you're terrified to be in front of people? Seriously, it's a punk band. You've got long hair and you stand like this for 45 minutes. You might jump around and spin around a couple times. So you don't have to talk to anybody. You don't have to talk to people. You're looking down. And now I'm standing up here talking. I let go of my past and I started to accept the change. Romans 8:28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called accordingly to his purpose for them. We all have a purpose. What that purpose might be, sometimes we don't quite know. Dive into prayer, the word, kind of figure it out. But God has a purpose for everything that we do in our lives. I hate to say that Ed's death, who was a strong Christian man, who loved working with the youth and loved helping out his church, I hate to say that the purpose of his death was to bring me back to church, but it absolutely was that. That funeral and me stepping back into church, that's what got me back there. But at the same time, we need to be able to choose faith. 
We have to choose faith. Faith isn't a feeling, it's a choice. We choose it. I can't look at you and go, you now have faith. I can't do that. Because we have to choose faith. I didn't have faith when I was younger. I didn't have faith even when I came back to church in my early 20s. As my faith grew stronger, my relationship with God, my walk with God grew stronger. Psalms 139.4, I don't think this is in your notes, but Psalms 139.4, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When it comes to faith, we got to be fearful. Last July and August, when we decided, Jen and I decided to take that step of faith, we had to be fearless. Absolutely fearless to do it. But we had to be firm in our faith. Isaiah 7, 9, unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand firm. If we teeter in any kind of way in our faith, we have to come back to being firm. Then Mark eleven twenty two, 22, have faith in God. Just have faith. Some might have a little more faith than others. Faith was the hardest thing for me. The absolute hardest thing for me. Sometimes it still is. Because let's be honest. When you're ready to change, whether it's something at work, maybe it's finances, maybe it's dealing with your children, whatever it might be, any kind of change. When you're ready to change, what's the first thing you do? Pros and cons list, right? Well, if I do this, but then there's this. But what about this? How many of us immediately go to prayer? No, you don't have to answer that. I don't need to raise hands. I still do it. There's sometimes when something comes up, it's like, well, hold on. Wait a minute. Let's pump the brakes a little bit here. Or sometimes I'm like, rip horn, ready to go. Let's do this. And my wife goes, mm, stop. Okay. But when it really comes down to it, it all comes back to having the faith. Can you make that change? Can you take that next step? Are you going to use God to help you with it? I learned that the hard way. But I'm telling you, it's been the best thing for me. Knowing that God is right there by my side. He is making me stand firm. But we also have to understand that some things never change. Some things just never change. In the midst of this crazy world, everything that is going on, everything that we deal with, we have to realize that there are some things that are just never going to change. And some of you are like, no, I want change. Please, I need change. But some things are just never going to change. God never changes. He never changes. Malachi 3.6 I am the Lord, and I do not change. He will never change. We change, but he won't change. Throughout the course of my life and my Christian walk, this has been huge to me, to know that he is always the same. He is always there. When I choose to have faith, I choose to let him guide. Let him tell me where to go. Help me out in my struggles. Help me out in my situations. <clears throat> Hebrews 13, 8. 
Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because God never changes. And I love that. I can keep that in my head all the time. He never changes, never changes. He's there for me. He's going to help me. The cool part is, sometimes when we don't think he's helping, like I, like, I didn't know my sponsors when I was in youth group, my adult sponsors that would help out with, I didn't know they knew things were going on. You know, but God knew. And he put people in my path throughout my life to help me in that situation. To help me with things. Because God never changes. So we got to let go of our past. And take that next step forward. But we got to be rooted and firm in our faith. We need to stand firm in our faith. That God is going to help us through it. And just to understand that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will always be with us. He will never change. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you this morning, Lord, and I, I just, I thank you. I thank you that the things in our past, Jesus died on the cross to get rid of those. And so, Father, if there's anybody out there this morning that is thinking about taking that next step with you and accepting you into their hearts, Lord, I ask that you can give them the strength to do that and they can pray the simple prayer of, Father, come into my life. Take a hold of me. I want to be with you. Or, Lord, if there's some that are out there this morning and they need to recommit their life. Maybe they've accepted you as their Lord and Savior, but they've kind of walked away a little bit. And they need to take that step and kind of reconnect with you. I ask that you can do that this morning and you can help them and push them and to reconnect with you. Father, I thank you that our past is gone, but we can stand firm in your faith that you can help guide us and push us and show us what our next steps need to be. And Lord, I love that you never change. No matter what we're going through, you never change. You are as strong as you were. So Father, I, I thank you for this morning and I thank you for this church and the people that are here and the love and support that happens here at Seven. I ask that you be with us the rest of this afternoon. Let us enjoy our Sunday as we get started for next week. We love you and we thank you in all that you do in our lives. In your name, amen.